Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and I have cyanobacteria all over my rock work. Yes, that red slime algae is everywhere. Now I've had to battle this before and I'm sure I'll have to battle it again, but it's back. And the reason I think it's back is because I had a gorgeous giant rose bubble tip anemone go through my palm. Spiked nutrients and that gave the cyanobacteria the food it needed to explode all over my tank. Now, there are many ways to fight cyano and I'm attacking it the best way I possibly know how. This video is not meant to be a tell-all of the best way to do it. This is the way that I think it should be done. So I've raised my magnesium and now I'm attacking the nutrients. So come check out what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I'm currently battling cyanobacteria in my tank. This stuff is just really nasty looking stuff. And it does have the potential to smother corals in your tank. And it's just a sign that there's something wrong in the system. And what I believe is the issue causing my cyano is I bought a rose bubble tip anemone from my local fish store. And it was just this giant, beautiful anemone. This is the biggest, most beautiful anemone I'd ever seen, so I had to pick him up and purchase him. And I put him in the tank, he was doing great. Um, my wife was keeping an eye on him while I was at work, and everything was fine. He was hanging out in the corner of the tank, everything seemed fine. She ran to the store, and when she got home, he had walked through my Jibo pump. Yeah, just a <clears throat> terrible thing, the thing's just completely shredded, nasty, gross. Um, I nearly cried. It was it was a horrible thing. But what ended up happening, of course, is it put a whole bunch of anemone, I guess, pieces into my tank that eventually decayed. And now I have a bit of a nitrate spike. I'm a bit about five parts per million, according to my test kit. And that's not a lot. But what I think is the issue is it's the total amount of nutrients is a shock to my system. My system doesn't usually have registerable nitrates in it. So to have that much nutrition enter the tank in a very short period of time, I think is the reason I have my cyano. It just kind of threw the whole system out of kilter. So I'm going to go down stairs and I'm gonna try to optimize things to take care of the nitrate issue. So. Let's go downstairs and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. My refugium is basically a bunch of live rock and <clears throat> shadow algae. Um, the problem with the live rock is having this much live rock in here becomes a bit of a sink for detritus. So what I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and pull all of the shado out of here and all of the live rock out of here so I can really do a solid job vacuuming all of this detritus out of the tank. Um, up until now it hasn't really been an issue to the point where it was spiking my nutrient levels, but it is definitely something I need to address and probably should be doing every few months anyways. So step one is pulling everything out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this algae out, put it in a bucket. I'm going to take all of this rock out and put it in a bucket. Um, it's very critical to me that I try to save as much of the life on this as possible. Um, first, if I expose it to the air, everything has the potential to die, which will uh, add more nutrients back into the system, which is, would suck. Secondly, I have a really awesome pod population in here. I've got ampiopods and copiopods and just many, many different species of copiopods in here. So I really want to keep them <clears throat> as happy and healthy as possible. Got all of the chato out. It's in a bucket. It's in a bunch of water. And now you can see all of the lace rock that I'm using as live rock in there. And this stuff's been in here a little over a year now. It's been in here basically since I started my tank. If you look at the old videos, this is um, what I was originally using. Um, as live rock in the tank um, just because it's something I had on hand and it had a fairly large quantity. But now it's in my tank, it's acting like live rock. The downside to having it set up the way it is is it is a nutrient sink. You can kind of see how dirty it all is. So now I'm going to 
clean it all up, kind of shake the debris off of it and try to vacuum as much of the gunk out of this stuff as I possibly can. Um, I do want to try to leave a lot of this rock in here. It's actually what's kind of holding down my chato. If you'll notice, my weirs are gone out of my refugium and that's because my container I'm using for a sump is flexible and over time the silicone gave way. So, so while I was cleaning everything and I was low on the water level, um, my water level wasn't that low, but apparently I knocked the heater and it was sitting up here at an angle and I just heard the damn thing pop and it was incredibly hot. So I believe I just blew my heater up. So when you're working on your sump, watch out for that or you'll be like me having to buy a new heater. So I've got four buckets of rock and algae and what's more than likely a broken heater. I'm still annoyed with that. And you can see all of the stuff that's built up on the bottom of my sump. It's a mix of sand and organic materials. I'm thinking it's mainly sand, but there's enough organic in there to worry about. So now I'm going to have to run to the store, I guess, and get a heater. I gotta, I'm gonna add some more water to this, but <clears throat> I'm gonna, I've already pulled 15 gallons of water out of here, so I'm gonna pull I have to put 15 gallons back in and my assumption is is I'm gonna need another 30 gallons of water to make all this work and my heater's dead so I gotta be careful what I do so I don't stress everything so here's the replacement heater it's an Aquion 300 watt heater it's a glass heater with the dial on top it's not my favorite style of heater but it's gonna have to do for now um, it's glass, I prefer titanium, I like external controls and all that, but um, it was inexpensive, it's available locally. The guy at Petco said that he'd been running it for two years, no issues. The other thing is, is it says that if it gets above the water line, it will automatically shut off, and that's why I destroyed my other heater, so that was a big selling point for me. All right, so I've got everything out, I've got some water in there and now I'm going to go ahead and start siphoning the water out. So since I learned my lesson I'm going to unplug the heater so we don't blow it up just in case and then my siphon's really low to the ground so I go ahead and start my siphon with this pump which I gotta plug in. So change of plan. I'm um, I've got a, the old quiet one pump, which used to be the main pump for this tank. And I am keeping the water <clears throat> mixed up while it pumps it out. I tried to siphon it and it just didn't work. Um, with the siphon, I just couldn't get a good enough siphon going. The other problem I'm having is my hoses keep clogging up, even with this quiet one pump on here. There's just too big a debris on here. And this is three quarter inch ID tubings. All right, so I vacuumed as much out of the tank as I possibly can and it's still pretty dirty. So plan B, shop vac. The shop vac worked extremely well. I'm really impressed. Um, if you need to get the sediment out of the bottom of your sump, a shot vac works extremely well. Suck all the water out and then use your shot vac to get the rest. Obviously make sure that the hose you're using you've cleaned up, but yeah, I'm so impressed. I've got all that silt out of the bottom of here. I'm gonna start running some water in and we'll go from there. I've put all the rock back in it's looking really good, everything looks really clean. I've got the heater going, I'm trying to get the water back up to temp, and I'm trying to make enough salt water to make this all work. Um, right now I'm a little low, I've got the RO running as fast as it goes, and I've got about 26, 27 gallons of salt water made. It won't be too much longer now, and I can put the rest of my water in, and let it heat up, and then go ahead and put the chato in. I've got the water in, and it's looking really good. Um, it's flowing. I don't have it running up to the tank yet, but I'm waiting for everything to come up to temp, but it looks really good. 
So, I've taken all of the rock out, I've vacuumed out all of the sediment. It's The water quality should be really good in here. I'm probably going to have to do this every six months to a year. Um, it's going to be close to 45 gallons of water I've changed out, which is quite a bit. Um, I have also added a second skimmer. I'm going to do a separate video on that, but I'm twin skimming it, which I think is pretty cool. And then when they had the Black Friday sale, I did pick up the Bulk Reef Supply carbon GFO reactor, so I am running that. So um, that was already on the tank, but this way I'm keeping my phosphates down. Um, while I was doing all this, I did mount it up in the air. Um, I don't like the way I mounted it, but there wasn't a stud back there. Long story short, it's going to be good enough for the time being. But that's my first shot at cracking nitrates on this system, and I think it's all going to turn out pretty good. Um, I'm hoping that bringing the nitrates down is going to bring down the cyanobacteria. Um, from what I'm told, it's basically the same stuff that um, grows regular by bacteria is nitrates and phosphates. I've got the GFO to bring down the phosphates. I've cleaned all, all the detritus that was in here and now I'm double skimming to help remove more gunk from the system. So I'm hopeful I'll have less breakdown, I'll have more efficiency, and uh, just a massive water change is always a good thing. Now I know people will say that you shouldn't do such a massive water change. Um, to some extent they're right in that um, systems don't like big changes in pH, they don't like big changes in salinity. Um, I mix all my water up to the same salinity, pH should be very close. And to be honest, my opinion is going from not so good conditions to better conditions isn't really the worst thing that can happen. So I'm doing my best to bring down the nitrates, take down the cyanobacteria. I hope it works, I will keep everybody updated. But thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers, and I'll see you on the next one. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching.